the Cocker Langenbeck approach. Indications All fractures of the posterior acetabular wall. All fractures of the posterior column. Transverse yuxta and infratectal fractures. Fractures involving the posterior wall and posterior column. Transverse fractures associated with posterior wall fractures. Combined fracture types in which the posterior column needs to be reduced under direct vision. Indications. If the transverse component is located at, yuxta, or below, infra, the level of the roof, tectum, of the acetabulum, therefore not involving the weight-bearing area of the acetabulum. Preparation and positioning. Special instruments. Surgeon familiarity and preference. Pelvic fracture table. Femoral traction. See arm control. Lateral or prone. Anesthesia and positioning. See figure. Endotracheal anesthesia. Elastic stocking on opposite leg. Prone on one piece radiolucent operating table. Checking of the fracture site with the image intensifier in anteroposterior, AP, ala, and obturator projections. Cushions under chest, pelvis, distal thigh, and ankle to avoid pressure sores and to facilitate abdominal respiration. Free draping of the involved lower limb. Alternative, stable lateral decubitus on an injured side. Contraindications. Fractures of the anterior acetabular wall. Fractures of the anterior column. Transtectal transverse fractures. Combined fracture types in which the anterior column fracture requires a reduction under direct vision. Superficial fascial dissection. Splitting of the gluteus maximus in line of its fibers starting at the greater trochanter in a proximal direction up to the crossing of the first neurovascular bundle. This creates a posterior muscle belly consisting of two-thirds of the gluteus maximus and an anterior belly that includes one-third of the gluteus maximus and the muscle of the tensor fasciae latae. In the distal part of the incision, the muscle of the tensor fasciae latae is split in line of its fibers up to the mid-third of the thigh. The insertion of the gluteus maximus from the gluteal tuberosity of the femur becomes now visible where it is detached one centimeter from its insertion into bone. Gluteus maximum splitting. Posterior muscle belly, inferior gluteal artery. Anterior belly, superior gluteal artery. That includes one-third of the gluteus maximus and the muscle of the tensor fasciae latae. Maximal careful dissection needed to avoid injury to superior gluteal artery. Deep dissection. Free the layer of fat covering the short external rotators, exposing the insertion of the piriformis tendon, the gemelli, and the internal obturator muscle. Carefully visualize the sciatic nerve. Detach the gluteus maximus one centimeter from its insertion into the gluteal tuberosity of the femur. Detachment can be done partially or completely. This allows a decrease of tension and easier mobilization of the gluteus maximus muscle. External rotators dissection. Isolate the piriformis tendon and the conjoined tendons of the obturator internus and superior and inferior gemelli muscles. They are tagged and incised one centimeter lateral from their femoral insertions. Exposure of posterior wall. Release and reflect each of the short external rotator muscles. Expose the greater sciatic notch the ischial spine, and the lesser sciatic notch. Insert two retractors in the greater and the lesser sciatic notches. Protect the sciatic nerve.
Optional T capsulotomy. Reduction internal fixation. Thanks for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.